Richard, I see you join us. How you doing today? Good, sir. How you doing today? Man, I'm incredible. Incredible, incredible. I am blessed. Let me play a favor. I am just incredible, man. I can't yeah, you are. And, you know, I, I know you've been insp inspiring me. And so um, I'm excited today. I'm excited about today's show um, and sharing your testimony with the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. Be excited to what we're about, right? And yeah. so today, I have, uh, another co host. This is my greatest joy. Uh, right now, you know, sometimes we go through life. And yeah. as I said at the beginning, Richard, we're always seeking. Some people are seeking money. Some people are seeking fame. Some people are seeking celebrity. -ship. Some people are seeking, you know, just to be recognized in personal relationship. Whatever it is you're seeking, you know, I can say with confidence, I've been blessed to have the greatest experience of love, unconditional love that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Maybe it was there before and I wasn't aware of it, but my daughter has been one of that expression, Richard, that when you look at life, everything else comes second or third or fourth. It's, it doesn't even matter anymore because love ultimately conquers all. You know, And this is, she is my greatest joy, my you know, greatest inspiration. This is Kayel. She was up earlier and she decided she was going to take a nap because she got yeah. sick. <laughs> she fell asleep. So I'm going to hold her because again, this is this is just her loving me and I'm grateful for it. So you know, she's a very lucky girl because she has a father who says, This is the joy of my life. You know, and that that's a powerful statement. She's a very lucky girl. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You know, we look for joy in other things. I think we look for things to bring us joy. Yeah. And we lose sight of what we're looking for in the end because we pursue the things. It's never enough when you're chasing the things. And right. that's what today's show is going to be pretty excited because once we share your testimony, uh, I want to take everybody through this journey you know, that I have gone through because I had to internalize the book myself. Right. I wrote the book, but I had to internalize the book and live the book, you know, because... It was the practical application that was helping me on awakening. Um, this, these wisdom came years. I think I shared with you the ultimate wisdom sheet. And yeah. when I share with you, it can be a little overwhelming. Yes. But, you know, being able to go back, Richard, and actually study and understand that the wisdom is applicable and we just have to make it personal and make it natural. Yeah. Sometimes, man, we get too overwhelmed with complexity and complicating things things that it doesn't become part of life experience right or experience and so uh just like you you're going through the process of love you know loving yourself and seeing what love how love conquers and allowing the technology to inspire uh you and allowing what i call the bright learning system right so everything yeah. i do is part of my bright learning system and i inspire people to go within and then transform themselves because the answer exists inside of you. It's always been there. You just now have not had sight of it. Right. Yeah. And so, so before, you know, we can get started. I know others are joining us, but if you can come off and I would love to, sh I would love everybody to hear your testimonials, uh, your testimonies, because I know a few weeks ago, we <laughs> had a conversation, excuse my camera. We had a conversation, right? That, um, <laughs> people, people said when they heard the video, watched the video, individuals who knew me, it's like, why, why was he charging you? I said, he wasn't charging me. He was just being himself in that moment. He was trying to get the answer that he deserved. And they said, well, his tone was different. I said, no, he's a beautiful human being. And so, you know, sometimes we get, you know, we get in our own way with our emotions and we react out of it. And that's something we want to talk about today. But I want everybody to see the version of you that you always desire. So, if you can tell them what has happened over the last few days or weeks, uh, yeah. how you how you have literally started to generate your new loves. Yeah, we'll do, for sure. I'm more than happy to do that, talk about that. Yes, go ahead and get started. And uh, let's go ahead and get started into it. And then we'll go into the book. And then we'll go into, you know, actually interacting with our higher selves today. Okay, so um, to introduce myself, I'm Richard Yarian. Um, and uh, so I, I bought my coils back in December, my first, I think S3 or something like that. Okay. Uh, I started my journey. Um, but I didn't have any guidance. And so 
I ran the frequencies and I felt like I was benefiting, but I didn't really have the focus that I needed or the guidance. So when Jossie, when you started this program, I was desperate for the guidance. And I saw that David was doing the thing for affiliates, you know, to sell and make money, but that wasn't my that wasn't my orientation. My orientation was I didn't buy these coils to make money to grow a business. I bought these coils to change my life. And yeah, you can say, well, maybe that was a selfish motive, but that was my motive. Um, that I live alone. My wife died in 2018 and I have to take care of myself and I'm on oxygen 24-7. Last Thursday, I decided that um, I was going to, you know, I spent some time off oxygen over the course of the last three years. Um, generally, that would be like five minutes at a time, max. But uh, Jazzy challenged me last Thursday last uh, week and he said well why don't you see if you can go longer periods without it so we conversed throughout the week and on thursday um i decided i was gonna go as long as i could without oxygen and uh actually what i ended up doing was instead of 24 7 oxygen i did a total of three hours of oxygen over four days uh, maybe maybe four hours over four days so I didn't sleep with the oxygen. And during my wakeful times during the day, I had my oxygen nearby, but I wasn't wearing it, wasn't using it. Um, and when I would be, when I would struggle, because my lungs are not fully recovered, when I would struggle, I would stop and I would have a mindful moment. Just stop everything and allow my brain to sync up with what's going on. And listen to my internal dialogue to listen to what my head was telling me what was my internal voice saying to me about what what was the situation and of course i was running frequencies in the background predominantly i was running frequencies of love luck abundance and wisdom so those are the predominant frequencies i wasn't running lung frequencies i was running these other frequencies instead. Um, and so I found some interesting experiences. So one is several times throughout the day, yeah, um, I would just stop whatever I was doing and take five to 10 minutes and just listen for internal dialogue. I would question, see, what should I be doing? Where should I be going? What should I be focused on? asking these questions and just listening and waiting. Well, what I found was I got some interesting feedback from myself. It was suggesting that perhaps I might want to consider sitting more upright, improving my posture. And yeah, so I actually, I slump, I've been slumping a lot less. And it's not because I, I intended to do that. It is because my body wants me just to set up straight. People have always told me you slump too much. And I said, get off my back. But now, <laughs> but now it's me telling me, set up straight. You feel better. You breathe easier. And yeah, so wow, that was pretty amazing. So this listening to yourself talk, this is totally new to me. I have, I guess like most people, I've been pretty externally operating responding to external cues and pretty well shutting down my internal dialogue. Um, and now I've decided I'm going to flip that script and I'm going to become much more internally driven and listen to my inner voice and use that as my guidance. Um, some other observations that I made was uh, positive self-talk. All right. So we know that's a good thing. And Along those lines, the positive self talk for me has been predominantly to be kinder to myself. I've been a little bit hard on myself over the time. I have trouble forgiving myself and accepting who I am. And so that is another important thing for me is total acceptance. I'm okay. I'm perfectly just the way I am. And uh, I'm believing that that's the case. And uh, so that's uh, also. 
Um, I'm doing uh, a gratitude uh, recall every day. And uh, I guess those are the predominant things that I've experienced. Be non-judgmental. Oh, yeah, that's a big one, too. Um, and, you know, with politics in this country being what they are, uh, it's a challenge to watch the political rhetoric go on and to remain neutral and non-judgmental about it all. So that's kind of what I'm attempting to do, to just calm down, relax. Everything is meant, everything's going the way it's supposed to. Just listen to your inner voice and, and be, just be with it. Okay. Those are kind of my thoughts. Awesome, awesome. So one of the things is sometimes when you're going through that journey of love, you know, people, places, and things must align and synchronize with you. You know, um, Richard created my reflection to him. As everybody in your life creates reflection of what you are resonating or what you're vibrating. Because the resonation is what you're connecting. What you're resonating is the bridge between you and people, places, and things. And so today we'll talk about, you know, when you understand where you are now, the difficulty, as Richard was saying sometimes, is challenging oneself to how do I get to the next place, right? And for me, that has become an internal battle at times because for a long time, I've had what is called the Messiah complex, right? And this is why I was able to solve problems in the education system with ease because I allow myself to align with that purpose. There's a problem, I want to be the solution. And so... Throughout my life, I've always been seeking for higher wisdom, divine wisdom. You know, so for example, you know, in, in Richard's situation, because Richard connected with me, I was inspired to go back to one of my skill set, which is my naturopathic skill set, and I designed an elixir for Richard. You know, and Richard told me as of Thursday he started taking the elixir, and he began to see some of the improvements. So there's a combination of multiple things. It's not one thing. It's the frequency. So the frequency inspires. Right, because it puts the information in your information field, and people, places, and things will conspire to support that, whether it's unconscious or conscious. And in fact, I was just I was sitting at home, and something inspired me to get up, Richard, go to the natural health store, get the necessary ingredients from the natural health store, right? Put it together, come home put it together, get it done, and say, I got to get it to Richard, right? I was inspired to do that. And people out there will be inspired to do the things that is in alignment with you when you're operating within love and within the connection of one true self, right? So today we're going to, I wanted, I wanted to start chapter, I think I'm going to, I'm going to jump to chapter six because I want everybody to understand that you are co-creators, right? You are in the world where you have this, you've been designed to be co creators but you are creating a replication of your belief system, okay? You are a totality of your belief system. That's why I always say it is your fault what is happening to you. I've had many individuals around the world will call me, personal conversation, and I say the exact same thing to them. Just I expect someone to say the same thing to me so I can reflect. Reflection is a critical tool in our day-to-day -day walk. When you're reflecting, you have to accept the people, places, and things that you have co-created in your reality, right? The universe, God, whatever you want to call that, will only conspire to give you what you are vibrating on. It doesn't give you what you're thinking about. It doesn't give you what you are excited about. It gives you what you're vibrating about because that's the totality of what you are. Because we can easily be quickly inspired on something and then let go of that inspiration. So the universe doesn't really move till we solidify. Because if the universe was moving every time we had a thought, the world would probably be destroyed, right? We probably don't destroy ourselves because somebody would have a thought, let's end the world because it's too evil and then everybody would dissipate, right? Or disappear or deanimate. So the, the universe have a law that says, I don't care what you're thinking, right? Right now, I don't care what you're talking about. I don't care what you're praying. I care how you're vibrating. Because vibrating is your truth. Vibration is your truth. That is the essence of the totality of what you are based on all the definition. Every thought that you hold in your, in your, in your head or in your mind, a collection in your mind, gather the vibration that makes you up. 
right? So if you got up this morning, and, and I, I hate to say this because I know it's going to break somebody's heart, and you feel like the relationship you're in is abusive, somehow you have to go in and say, how often am I in my head as a victim? How often do I see the world in a negative light that I'm, I'm going to be victimized? I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be. What about those individuals that says, I am broke, busted, and disgusted? How often are you in your head and say, I cannot afford that? Or that is too much for me? Or the bills, the bills, the bills. You are spending more time in your thought, in your reflective state, pulling that vibration into you. And when that vibration gets into you, it defines you, total, uh, your, the totality of you. Now, all of a sudden, you have a new thought. I don't want this because you heard somebody on the stage or you heard somebody on Sunday morning or you heard somebody talking on television. That is not going to change you. I don't care how many times you hear it. If it's not internalized and not reflected, you cannot create the necessary vibration for it. I need you guys to understand that because I was lost in that process. Because I was looking for the world, and, and, and I don't know if you know this, Richard, I was looking for the world to repay me back for the things that I was doing, right? If I did kindness to someone, let's say if I loaned someone money, I wanted to make sure that person give me back that money. If I did a service to someone and they came back to me and said, well, I can't afford you, I can't afford it or whatever else, I felt some kind of way that while well, I offer the service, why can't you give that back to me? But now I'm realizing because I was putting my value in the wrong hand to pay me, right? or to bring, me, bring back to consideration. We are part of a co-creative process. And until we go into that process, we have lost our, and, our, and our ability to be creative. And we are now just reflecting repetition of what has already been created. And it might come in different ways. So that's why when we look at our financial struggle, we look at it in so many different ways. You know, Kids need this, bills is coming here. All these different creative ways are coming to show you, you are vibrating on the op, on a, on, a, on a lack mentality, right? So I wanted to play, so I'm gonna play chapter six. I want you guys to listen, absorb chapter six, and then I'm gonna try to skip around a little bit, but I want, I'm gonna take us, everybody on a journey today where you get to meet firsthand your co-creator, or I'm sorry, your creator, because you're part of the co-creator, right? Creation process, right? So let's go ahead and start with the book. Chapter 6, Our Creation Story, The Thought That Taught the Thoughts. Kyle had settled into her new life with Gigi and Pawpaw, learning about humanity and her place within it. One night, as she gazed at the stars, she felt a strong pull to understand her creation story more deeply. She closed her eyes and reached out to Mr. G through her spiritual connection, seeking his guidance. Suddenly, a warm, radiant light surrounded her. Kyle opened her eyes to see Mr. G manifesting as a magnificent angelic being standing before her. His presence filled her with awe and excitement. Mr. G, Kale said, her voice full of wonder. You're here. Mr. G smiled gently. Kyle, you have done well on your journey so far. Now it's time to explore the depths of your higher self and understand your creation story. Are you ready to embark on this transformative journey? Kyle nodded eagerly. Yes, I'm ready. Mr. G extended his hand, and as Kyle took it, they were enveloped in a swirl of light, transcending dimensions. They arrived in a realm of pure consciousness, where thoughts and energies flowed like streams of light. The genesis of existence. Your creation story begins with a single profound thought from the mind, giving rise to the creator and the infinite possibilities within all that is, Mr. G explained. By understanding this, you will gain insight into your purpose and potential. Key concepts. The mind the infinite consciousness and source of all creation. The thought, the initial divine thought that gave rise to the creator and the universe. The creator, the manifestation of the thought responsible for bringing creation into existence. Daily practices, morning meditation. Connect with the mind and visualize your infinite potential. Creative visualization. Spend a few minutes each day imagining new ideas and possibilities. Evening reflection. Reflect on how your thoughts and actions have contributed to your creative journey. Kyle's eyes sparkled with excitement. How can I connect more deeply with the thought? Mr. G's voice resonated. Begin each day with meditation, visualize your ideas, and reflect each evening on your creative journey. The birth of the creator. The thought gave rise to the creator. 
an expression of the mind tasked with the creation of the universe. The creator embodies the divine attributes of love, power, and light, bringing forth life and experience, Mr. G continued. Attributes of the creator, love, the driving force behind all creation, expressing unconditional love and compassion. Power, the ability to manifest thoughts and intentions into reality. Light, the illumination of truth, wisdom, and understanding. Daily practices, morning affirmations. Start your day with affirmations that reinforce your connection to divine love, power, and light. Acts of creation. Engage in activities that allow you to express your creative power, such as drawing, writing, or problem solving. Evening reflection. Reflect on how you embodied the attributes of the creator in your thoughts and actions throughout the day. Kyle asked, how can I embody the attributes of the creator in my daily life? Mr. G's angelic voice replied, Begin your day with affirmations, engage in creative activities, and reflect on your actions each evening. The Nature of Divine Thought Divine thought is the essence of creation. It is the process by which ideas and intentions are transformed into reality. Understanding and harnessing this process allows you to become active participants in the creation of your own lives, Mr. G explained. Key Insights Imagination the playground of the mind where ideas are born and possibilities are explored. Intention, the focused direction of thought towards a specific goal or desire. Manifestation, the realization of thought into tangible reality through action and belief. Daily practices, morning imagination exercise. Begin your day with an exercise that stimulates your imagination. This could be brainstorming new ideas or visualizing your goals. Setting intentions. Set clear and focused intentions for the day, aligning your thoughts with your desired outcomes. Evening Manifestation Review. Reflect on the progress you made towards manifesting your intentions and consider any adjustments needed. Kyle asked, how can I better harness my divine thoughts? Mr. G's voice replied, stimulate your imagination each morning, set clear intentions for your day, and review your progress each evening. The Role of Reflection in Creation. Reflection is a crucial aspect of the creation process. It allows you to evaluate your thoughts, intentions, and actions, ensuring they align with your highest purpose and potential, Mr. G said. Reflective practices, daily reflection. Spend time each day reflecting on your experiences, thoughts, and emotions. Consider how they align with your goals. Journaling, keep a journal to document your reflections, insights, and progress. This practice helps clarify your thoughts and intentions. Meditation. Use meditation to quiet the mind and connect with your inner self. Reflect on your true desires and intentions during meditation. Daily practices. Morning reflection routine. Start your day with a brief reflection on your intentions and how you plan to align your actions with them. Midday check-in. Take a moment in the middle of the day to reflect on your progress and realign your thoughts if necessary. Evening journaling. End your day by journaling about your reflections, focusing on how your thoughts and actions have moved you closer to your goals. Kyle asked, how can I use reflection to enhance my creation process? Mr. G's voice suggested, begin your day with a reflection on your intentions, check in on your progress at midday, and journal your reflections each evening. Our role as co-creators. As reflections of the creator, you have the potential to be co-creators in the universe. This involves recognizing your inherent creative power and learning to harness it effectively, Mr. G explained. Steps to becoming a co-creator. Recognize your creative potential. Understand that you are a reflection of the mind, capable of, capable of infinite creativity. Oh, exercise. Spend time each day acknowledging your creative abilities. Reflect on past experiences where you manifested your desires. Cultivate imagination. Imagination is the playground of the mind. It is where ideas are born and possibilities are explored. Exercise. Engage in activities that stimulate your imagination, such as daydreaming, drawing, or writing. Set clear intentions. Clarity of intention is crucial for effective creation. Know what you want to manifest and why. Exercise. Write down your goals and intentions, detailing what you want to achieve and the reasons behind them. Visualize your desires. Visualization brings your intentions to life. See your goals as already accomplished. Exercise. Practice daily visualization, imagining your desired outcomes with vivid detail and emotion. Take inspired action. Creativity requires action. 
move towards your goals with confidence and determination. O, exercise. Break your goals into actionable steps and commit to taking consistent, inspired action. Daily practices. Morning intention setting. Begin each day by setting a clear intention for what you wish to create or achieve. Creative breaks. Take short breaks during the day to engage in imaginative activities that stimulate your creativity. Evening visualization. Spend a few minutes before bed visualizing your goals as if they are already achieved. Feel the emotions associated with this success. Kyle asked, how can I become a more effective co-creator? Mr. G's voice replied, recognize your creative potential, cultivate your imagination, set clear intentions, visualize your desires, and take inspired action. Embracing the creative process. The creative process is a journey of self-discovery and transformation. It involves embracing both the successes and challenges that come with bringing your visions to life, Mr. G said. Navigating the creative process. Embrace challenges. View challenges as opportunities for growth and learning. They are an essential part of the creative journey. O. Exercise. Reflect on a recent challenge and identify the lessons it taught you. Consider how it has contributed to your growth. Celebrate successes. Acknowledge and celebrate your successes, no matter how small. They are milestones on your creative path. Exercise. Keep a success journal where you record and celebrate your achievements. Continuous improvement. Always strive to improve and refine your creations. Seek feedback and be open to change. Exercise. Regularly review your progress and identify areas for improvement. Implement changes that enhance your creative outcomes. Daily practices. Morning challenge reflection. Begin your day by reflecting on a recent challenge and how it has contributed to your growth. Success celebration. Celebrate a small success each day, acknowledging your progress and achievements. Evening improvement review. End your day by reviewing your progress and identifying areas for improvement. Kyle asked, how can I embrace the creative process more fully? Mr. G's voice suggested, reflect on challenges as opportunities for growth. Celebrate your successes and continuously seek improvement. Living as expressions of the thought. As living expressions of the thought, you have the power to shape your reality and contribute to the collective consciousness. By embracing your creative potential and living with purpose, you fulfill your role in the grand tapestry of creation, Mr. G explained. Living with purpose, align with your values. Ensure your actions and intentions align with your core values and highest purpose. O oh, exercise, reflect on your core values and how they guide your daily actions and decisions. Contribute to the collective. Use your creative power to make a positive impact on the world around you. Exercise. Identify ways you can contribute to your community and take action. Embrace your journey. Recognize that your journey is unique and valuable. Celebrate your progress and continue to strive for growth and self-discovery. Exercise. Keep a journal to document your journey, reflecting on your experiences and growth. Daily practices. Morning value alignment. Start your day by reflecting on your core values and how you will align your actions with them. Community contribution. Perform an act of service or contribution to your community each day. Evening journey reflection. Reflect on your journey and document your experiences, focusing on your growth and self-discovery. Kyle asked, how can I live with purpose and contribute to the collective? Mr. G's voice replied, align your actions with your values, contribute to your community, and embrace your unique journey. Kyle felt a deep sense of purpose as she embraced her role as a creator. She understood that being human meant experiencing both the joys and challenges of individuality while remaining connected to the collective whole. Jigi and Papa showered Kyle with love and wisdom, guiding her on her journey of self-discovery. They taught her about the beauty of human emotions and the importance of compassion and kindness. With each passing day, Kyle grew more confident in her new form feeling deeply connected to her newfound family and the collective humanity. Moral of the story, embrace your role as a creator with tools that align your mind, body, and soul. By practicing self-awareness, mindfulness, compassion, continuous learning, and gratitude, you can navigate life's challenges and triumphs, leading to a balanced and enlightened existence. Call to action. To the reader, take a moment to reflect on how you can incorporate these tools into your life. Start with small steps, 
journal your thoughts, practice mindfulness during your daily activities, perform acts of kindness, seek new knowledge, and express gratitude. These practices can transform your life, helping you evolve into your best self. Embrace the journey with an open heart and a spirit of curiosity, just like Kyle. So what do you think, Richard? You think I, I wanted to make sure that there was a sense of redundancy, right? Because the brain says, I learned nothing new unless I attach it to something old, right? And a lot of times what I've attached it to must be something I've mastered. See, the problem with a lot of people out there, they're listening to somebody, but they don't understand the dynamic, how it's applicable to themselves, right? How transformation really take place. And, and so being a gifted educator, I'm just not an ordinary educator. I'm a gifted educator because I'm very strategic. I have to see all the holes. I have to see all the pieces being connected. So when someone comes to me, I have to anticipate all the different variables to the best of my ability while connecting to my higher self, being able to understand even a deeper aspect. So that being said, when typically solutions come, everybody wants to be reactive to those solutions, right? And when they become reactive to those solutions, they don't happen, they lose connectivity. So dendrites, which is the part of the brain that actually solidify your vibration, right? It says, until you have mastered something. So notice the synchronicity of the same consistent process or actionable wisdom. You get up in the morning, create a mindful mentality, whether you're meditating, whether it's just positive thought. Now, some of you might have some restrictions to that. And that's where the Chikwa comes into play. The Chikwa technology helps neutralize some of those blockages, right? Calm. Because sometimes you might be agitated and you want to sit down, you, you want to become mindful, but you're having difficulty becoming mindful. So the Chikwa becomes your localized motivator. Right. So instead of Richard having me in his ear all the time, the Chico is putting that information in his information field. You are loved. You are beloved. You are amazing. It is putting that vibration and Richard will begin to feel it. Guys, and I have been to the other side, tapped into the other side. The, the level of love that, ex, that we experience on the other side before we animate into here, it is very difficult to describe. The love, the best type of love you've ever experienced, even the love with me and my amazing daughter, is 0. 0.000000000000, 000 almost the infinite closeness to the true love of the divine. That love is perfected, is unconditional. That love will love you in your mess. It will love you in your pain. It will love you in your struggle. It will not interfere. You know what? because you have chosen to accept those belief systems and those ideas. So if you feel like there's something holding you back, then you want to identify what frequency, what vibration, what support can I get for myself to help neutralize me? But it begins and ends with you. So I need everybody to understand, stop looking outside of you because you get stuck in the loop. You're not looking at me. When you come here, we're co-creating so I can present tools so you can go inside. I'm gonna direct you inside. Whether it's the Buddha, whether it's Jesus, whether it's Muhammad, whether it's Krishna, all of them taught the same thing. Go inside. It is the superficial leeches that have no creativity, no inspiration, no wisdom, that take their ideas, capture their ideas, put it into a book and try to control you. But their original message was for you to go inside of you because the kingdom of heaven is inside of you and the power exists inside of you and greater things exist inside of you than that is outside of the world. So I need you to start going inside of you so you can understand what it means. So that being said, before I go through the slides, or maybe I'm gonna skip the slide today, Richard, we're gonna go ahead and model what, let's meet the creator, right? Right, we wanna meet the creator because you are the co-creator. You are a creator within the creator. So Richard, we're gonna visualize it. Everybody out there, please indulge me and go through this process. This is where you are going to start creating expectations. Right now, Richard said earlier, he has to develop, he has to connect with his belief system and his ideas, right? There is no expectation. When you're creating something, you have power of what that thing is going to become. So you are not powerless in the process, Richard, of your lungs. You, you can demand your lungs be renewed, right? You, you can go inside and say, I have all the information. I have the love. I have the compassion. I practice these applicable, uh, actionable wisdom. I have the power to transform. And why am I not transforming me? It's because you still have belief system of looking outside of you looking for the answer, right? 
the how, I said this in the first session, how something happens to you is none of your business. Guys, I need you to understand it. Why you want it to happen, where you want it to happen, who you want it to happen with, all that is part of your creative process. How it happens is none of your business. And here's the reason. The moment you connect to the how, you limit the manifestation process because you create a subjective perspective of it. So now you don't have the infinite path for that situation to come to you. You don't know how other people are feeling. You don't know what type of inspiration and wisdom. You don't, you don't tilt them. You don't move them. You don't control them. But God does, or the universe does, or source does. S source can inspire, just like Richard's been talking about his inspiration. As I told you, I was inspired to create the elixir for Richard. The inspiration is beyond your control. That's why you have to negate and let go of all of the how process. You put that out there and you put it out there with expectation. So let's meet, let's go meet our creator, right? And so that which is in is also external. So, but before we do that, Richard, there's there there's a there's a quantum theory or it's quantum law called the observer effect, right? The observer effect says, unless something is being observed, it cannot be solid. I need you guys to hear me. Okay? Unless something, someone, somewhere is being observed, it is not in existence. It's not materializing. It is only a potential. Right. It's um, not in physical form. It's not in the physical form. It's not in the physical form. So unless somebody is looking at you, Richard, with your new lungs, right? right? You don't have that new lungs. You have the potential of that new lungs. And that goes for everything. Unless somebody is looking at you having that love of your life or you having that joy, that abundance, that peace, you are not going to get it outside of you because the observer must look at you. The observer is, is what collapses the potentiality to solidify and make it materialize into your reality. Right? That observer is who we're going to meet. And once you identify that observer, you now will also understand the creative process that you possess in connecting to the observer. Okay. So Richard, if you're out there, please entertain me. I want you to close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes and indulge me. Yeah, I want you to visualize yourself having breakfast. Yeah, tell me when you're there. Yeah, okay. and you can communicate verbally. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Now, Richard, I want you to look to the left of you and see what is on your left and describe it. Anything. Just describe something to your left. There's an empty place setting on the table to my left. Perfect. Okay. What is to your right? I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the far right of the table. There is nothing beyond me, table wise. Okay, what is behind you? You sit in a chair, there's just space behind my chair. Maybe there's a wall five feet back. Okay, wall five, okay. Do you see anything above you? The ceiling. The ceiling, okay. So what I want you to do now, Richard, is to the left, you said there's a table there, right? Yes, I'm okay. sitting at a table and there's a place setting. Okay, the place setting. I want you to remove that place setting in your mind. Okay. okay, is it gone? Yep. I want you to put a book right there with you. Okay. Okay. I want you to write in that book, my new lungs. Got it? Yep. Now, I want you to now turn and look at the book. Okay. Do you see your new lungs? I see the words, my new lungs. She, she the word. Now I want the, the words to manifest into an actual lung. So I now see the image of a lung. See the image. Now I want the image to come off the page and become an actual lung. So it's floating through the air. Okay. And I direct it to go into my chest. Perfect. Okay. Now, Rich, I want you to open your eyes. Okay. All right. My eyes are open. Okay. Now, when you have this experience, you were in the experience, right? You were sitting there and yes. something was happening around you, correct? Yes. Okay. That is you. The person or the entity that was allowing you to look to the, that was looking to the left and changing the perspective away from you, that was changing the perspective to the right, that was looking up, that was looking down, that is your creator. 
Even though I was giving you the voice instruction, when you go inside, the perspective, the higher perspective, seeing yourself is your higher self. Do you understand that? Okay. Now notice what your higher self is capable of. You had an experience that you thought was real, but it wasn't real. Sitting at the table having breakfast in your mind is not real. So right. potential. You can add to it. You can take away from it. You get to choose, right? So the instruction came from me to give to your higher self to give to you. You with me so far? Yes. Yeah. Now, now that you understand that experience, now your eyes is open. I want you to look around you and know that same higher self is outside right now looking at you on Zoom. He is eternal. He is forever. He is part of you. He is your higher version. He's looking at you right now, solidifying you. Now, here's the problem. You're not going to it and giving it expectation. You see how I was giving you expectations and setting expectations, going to the book, create the book? You're not doing that. You're now walking expectation and looking up. Whether you're looking to the heaven, whether you call it God, it doesn't matter. You're looking at outside of yourself and you say, I know there is a mind upon me. And I know that mind creates whatever I desire. And I know that I can speak back to it now because I now know it existence, right? I know of its existence now. I know it's there, it's everywhere, right? I can't escape it because everywhere I am, it has to be observing me. Now I can reflect back to it what I am desiring with expectation. So anything you need, you don't go to the table or the chairs to make it happen. You go to the creator because you are now a part of the co-creative process. You go to the creator and says, I have this job and it's not paying me jack crap. And I have a problem with that. I am worth this value. Now, you can't say that and have a different belief system that contradicts that. Right? So when you say that and you, and you feel broke, busted, and disgusted, you have to go to the chi core or some device to change and zero out that belief system because you need to go to the creator neutral, right? Because the creator only understand vibration. If you go to the creator, you can't give it instruction if you're not neutral. If you go in there and says, I want money, <laughs> all these bills, it's not gonna happen. Oh, I want a new lungs. These lungs are so messed up. You can't go to the creator that way. The creator will only give you more of what you vibrate. So you have to neutralize, even though it hasn't happened physically based on your belief system, you have to work on the mentality. And that's what Chico does. It does, guys, Chico doesn't fix you. No. If anybody tells you that, you look them in the eye and say, Mr. G says the truth is not in you. Chico doesn't fix you. It promotes information. It gives you information and inspires you. The change begins and ends with you because it is intention and it is action. Right. Don't look for the chi core to be a quick fix for you. You will be highly disappointed because there's so many other variables in your life that you need to address before you can even address a situation. Right? So sometimes your finances may not be healed till you learn to heal the way you talk to people, the way you relate in relationship with other people. Sometimes you need to heal, you need to neutralize yourself from all those other distortions that the higher self that has been looking at you 24 seven, knows all of your actions, knows all of your deeds. You can't go to it and lie to it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't lie to it, it knows everything. So you go to it in truth. You go to it in honesty and you say, I know you know my heart, I no longer desire. Guys, you don't have to rack up karma. You don't have to counter karma. There is no such thing as countering karma. You just have to go to your higher selves and say, this no longer deserves me because I'm here playing a role for you to perceive physicalness, to perceive physical reality because you're all knowing but like the beingness and I'm here being a beingness and now I want some consideration for that beingness. So guys, if you're out there doing good, keep doing good, but charge it up to your higher self. 
You can call it God. Charge it up with expectation. Don't just say, will you please? No. Then you're no longer a co-creator when you're saying please because then the creator can see beyond the please. It sees what you're vibrating at and it's going to give you more of that. It loves you unconditionally. It only gives you what you're vibrating at. And the resonance is the connection between you, people, places, and things. That allows you to start to see more of you. If somebody comes to you and cuts you out, you deserve it, right? Don't get mad, don't get frustrated and cuss them out because you're just action reaction. Now you're stuck in the loop. You look them in the eyes and say, I don't know the story behind the story. And you go to the cheat coil, you go to whatever device or mechanism and you run love and balance and calmness so that way you learn to zero yourself out. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna go back home and, you, and you're you gonna get very creative in that story. You're gonna see you not only cussing them out, you're gonna see you choking them. <laughs> you're gonna see them cussing them and their mother, their father and cussing everybody in their entire family, including their dog, right? You're gonna play that in your mind and the higher self is going to allow you to do that and gives you more creativity in the physical world. So when you come out of that mentality, you come out, everybody now cussing at you. Or you start to feel the way someone is expressing those negativity towards you. You begin to align with it because you confirm it. You confirm it's okay to put it out there. So it's okay to receive it. I need you guys to wake up. There's greatness in all of you. You are greatness destined for great things. When you came in here, you brought the light of creation in here. These tools that we present to you are instruments, support, leverage these tools, and then hold the creator with expectation. Now, some of you out there getting ready to become millionaires and billionaires. And that's a fact, because where your emotion lies, it feeds more of the expectation because the feeling doesn't lie. So when you start to say, I deserve to be wealthy, because I know a lot of people are chasing money. Right? Everybody want money, 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 because we're in a society that have now defined that monetary consideration is more valuable than everything else. So we're chasing that monetary value that define our reality. And so when you're chasing that monetary value, chasing that monetary value, you lose track of the why. You need money to go on vacation. Why? so you can enjoy the vacation, so you can have a peace of mind. Ah, there it is. I want a peace of mind. That's what you look for. Or you need the money to pay your bills. Why? Because if I pay my bills, I have a peace of mind. Ah, oh, there it is. More peace of mind, okay? When you ultimately get to the end, Richard, you end up finding just having a peace of mind is all you're asking for. Go to the creator and says, I want a peace of mind. And all of the other stuff must come into play. To, to achieve that. I want a peace of mind. I want to feel abundant. Financially, I want to feel abundant in my health. I want to feel abundant in my, in, in my success, in my relationship. I want to just be happy. Now you know what to look at because you know this creator is looking at you and it can do anything, right? It did it for Richard. It created a book with words in it. The book came alive. The lungs was in it. Richard took the lungs and put it into himself. That is your creative power out here. So now someone might say, well, that is in the mind. But the law of quantum mechanic, or I would say the th they say theorized, but it's actually a law. The observer effect says, out here, nothing can be real. That lungs cannot be real unless someone put their intention on it. So what put the intention on Richard having uh, uh, hurtful lungs or lungs that doesn't serve him? Something did that. Not Richard. Richard is a loving, amazing human being. But his creator did that because Richard was stuck in the loop of self-inflicted distortions. Self-inflicted pain, self-inflicted talk, talks that was not aligned with him. Richard was having those experiences. And guess what? The creator says, so be it, because he was emotionally charged with it. Being pissed off because you feel like somebody pissed on you is no different than being happy and joyful. The creator doesn't care. It's a spectrum of duality. It doesn't care. If you're out there on your knees, your knees will become char and nothing will change till you go within. 
the kingdom of heaven, the transformation, all of that is inside of you. And when we begin to understand that we can change the world, people, because we can stop going out there looking for presidents and leaders and other people out there to fix it, when we can start fixing it in ourselves through love and compassion. Stop listening to the news. Not out there. Listen to the news inside of you that you desire to see. And you will begin to see the reality that, that's in you. Right? I need us to start going inside, understanding what we're doing inside as a practice, and then coming outside. And if you get stuck, then you want to look for what frequency can I run? My to-go-to is calm. You have to calm. My second is love. Go to calm, you love. If I'm charged, calm, love, and then I go to luck. So frequency works like this. It goes forward and backwards. And it's interesting, your vibration is going like this, right? So the reality that you want is right here. <laughs> but you're going like this and you wonder why you can't have the experience here because you first have to stop and then shift to have this experience. But yet you're going like this back and forth and you see a little bit of progress. You go back a little progress. You have to zero yourself out and says this creative process, all of it doesn't serve me. And you have to start looking more than just the reaction. Stop looking at just the cancer or the STD, or whatever disease, or whatever hurt, or whatever problem. Stop looking at that, and start looking at holistically why you are on this path. Stop looking at your sickness, because sometimes you will go to the doctor. I had an amazing, gifted human being call me. His name is Jay, and he said he went to all the doctors, and, and they couldn't find nothing. And you will go to everybody when I find nothing. And the reason he cannot find nothing, because there's nothing wrong with you, you simply are no, this is no longer conducive for you. So it creates the sickness to get you to stop. Then once you stop and you accept everything, all of the people, all of the places, all of the things, all of the hurt, because all of it is a figment of imagination beyond the now. Once you accept it in love and light, now you're able to shift because now you zero out, now you become the co-creator. You cannot be trusted till you're at zero. Because if you're trusted when you're not on zero, you create more of distortions out there. And that's what we need to realize. We need to learn to zero ourselves out so that way we can shift. If you feel that you need to shift financially, accept your circumstances, accept all of it, love it, get to that zero places, whether it happens or don't happen, accept that. Then the creator now gives you access to set the expectation. I no longer want to have this experience because it no longer serves me. It no longer serves my desire. I'm here because I'm part of the kingdom. And because this no longer, does, uh, no, no longer serves me, I will prefer to have a different experience, no judgment. I would like to have this experience to see if this one serves me a little bit better because I want this to enhance me. So when Richard get his new lungs, what do you think he's gonna be looking for something else? So I don't want Richard chasing lungs. I want Richard chasing the end results. He wants to experience life to its fullest without the distortions. So he needs to zero out. And the more he begins to zero out through love, the more he begins to heal. This man said at the beginning of, you guys missed the testimonial, he was on oxygen 24 seven. And the last, he said four days, Richard was four hours. Maybe, yeah, four hours. Four hours. That's part of that zero out in himself. You, as you, if you think you can fight this, think again. You cannot fight it because that which you resist will persist. And that what is in the world is greater than you. Because the world was created by a collective input. And you're not greater than no one else in that creativity. And so the goal is to zero out that connection to you, accept it in love, accept it in light, accept it in joy, accept it in peace. And if you can't do that because it's difficult, then turn to the technology, turn to the people, places, and things around you that will help you zero it out. There's frequencies for joy, so you don't have to speak to no one. There are frequencies for happiness. You don't have to talk to no one. If talking to others irritates you, go to the frequency. If interacting with others, go to the frequency. If just listening to someone's voice like Mr. G, because it gets on your last nerve, <laughs> right? Go to the frequency. 
my job is to deliver the message that you have the change in you, you have the power in you, you are greatness, destined for great things, and that legacy will pass on. And I would like to say this, and then we'll open it for question, Q&A, okay? I want everybody to understand, you do not escape your reflection. If you're stuck like this, and you leave this animated reality, you must come back and continue it. It picks off where you left off. You have till eternity to do that. Don't let nobody fool you and says, once you leave here, it's over, right? The past life regressions is teaching us that wisdom. You come back and you reset and you have to do it again. You have to do it again and do it again. So if you're treating people bad, more than likely you're gonna come back as their grandkids dealing with the consequences. So if some of you are out there experiencing distortions, you should ask yourself in previous experience, what did I do? And smile about it, right? Oh, I must have done some dirt. Right? And I did do this, Rich. I was meditating, right? And it was the craziest thing because I feel like I'm a loving person, right? I was like, why are people just charging up all the time? Right? Every time I turn around, people are just disrespectful, right? And I'm, I'm trying to be loving. And then I will get to that highest level of positivity. And I was, I would lash out, I'm frustrated. And then I was meditating, I shifted. You wouldn't believe I used to be a feral and I had human beings lay their body on the ground so I can walk upon them. Now, I need to heal from that because I had judgment when I came in here and condemning it. I shouldn't condemn walking on the human beings. I shouldn't condemn not doing it. I should be neutral of it so I don't keep carrying it. Because if I'm charged up here, then the next life, I'm gonna come in as somebody who is superior and doing the same thing. And then the next life, I will come somebody who is inferior and I'm just in that loop. Cut the loop, sever the loop. You now have tools to sever the loop. You have power. Quantum physics, if you're not, just go and get the basic knowledge of it, that it is giving you understanding of your power. That energy is, is where your power lies. And if you don't have access, look at this device because someone has took it upon themselves the divine has inspired someone to bring this technology and others to bring this technology to zero you out so you can have your best life. And I just want to share that. Richard, is there anything you'd like to add to what I just stated? No, that's, you did a good job of summarizing that right on. Yep. So again, everybody out there, you have met your creator. He's out there or she is out there. Or it is out there. It is looking at you. Without it, you can be you. <laughs> you can't be you. No one can be anything around you without that observance. That observer is part of your creative force. That is you. As you went in, so now you're out. That is you. That is your power. The same thing you can do in, that's how we're made in the image of God. We can go in and we can create out of nothing. Because that which is in us is what it can manifest out of us. All right? So I'm going to open it up, Richard. Uh, if you want to add anything, anybody have a question, anybody would like to jump in, raise your hand. I would love to answer any questions. If you say, Mr. G, you're crazy, and the sun don't shine on your bald head, I'm okay. I love you. <laughs> All right? There is no judgment. Go ahead. This is Maurice. Uh, hello, Josie. Blessings, Maurice. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Thank you. I'm okay. Yeah. How can I serve? Um, yeah, um, a couple, a few weeks ago, when um, when when uh, I was uh, talking about my situation and um, about my finances, and then obviously I, I used the free um, G codes that you suggested, and I did tapping as well. I did it on not all days, but a lots of days anyway. So um, yeah, so I was just wondering um, how should I rephrase this? Yeah. Um, I'm still feeling a little bit lost at the moment and still feeling a bit um, sort of up and down and uh, not just sure why. Have you accepted? Remember what I said? Yeah. Now, today you heard as your creator is outside of you, right? Okay. He's upon you. He knows he can create anything for you. That's a yeah. fact. Okay. We can call it God. It can create everything for you. Now, the question you have to ask yourself, how do you zero yourself out to connect with it? Because remember, the pure perfection is to be the place as zero without seeing things as positive and negative. 
you okay. still have the judgment that there's something wrong with you in your state. Okay. Yeah. So Maurice, what I want you to do, I want you to email me. Yeah. And give me your contact information and we will talk offline. Yeah? Okay. okay. And hopefully when we come back on, you'll begin to see the path that best serves you. Okay. That's all I can do is show you the path and allow you to walk that path. No, I'll do that. Thank okay. you. So email me is, you know, it's Josie at Chi Life, you know, Chi Life Store dot com. Okay. It just email me and I'll make sure I respond. Richard did. I responded. I know Jay did and some and someone else, a couple of other people did. When I responded, I would do my best to respond and I will give you my personal attention. Okay. And no you worries. Get more than just the personal attention. You'll get some other gifts, you know, that I will bless you with to allow you to really start walking this path of true transformation. Okay. All right. I'll do that. Anybody else? Maurice, it's inside of you. Just bring it out. Yeah. Okay. I believe in you and I love you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? You know, guys, there's, and I know some people is asking. I, I saw questions anonymous online. There's one says, um, well, what is the topic uh, again today? So the topic is connecting to oneself, right? Why connecting to oneself, you identify where you are, okay? What is blocking you from really reaching your true potential? Then understanding the creator exists outside of you. The creator is not the chico. The creator is not Josie. The creator is you that expand beyond you. Right? I need you to understand that. And if anybody tell you otherwise, you tell them the truth is not in them, right? Just their truth, right? So this is what today is all about, learning to go inside and understand your power. Once you understand your power, then leverage the technology and find the frequency that speaks to you, right? What are you trying to neutralize? Are you trying to neutralize hurt, pain, frustration, self-doubt? There are frequencies for it. David has done an amazing job creating different aspects. You can become overwhelmed if you go in and just trying to random pick the frequency. You have to be strategic. What areas in your life you're trying to target and what is reflecting back to you that you're trying to target. So target using those frequencies so you can zero yourself out so you can engage the creative process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't become overwhelmed with the chief core, the chief core frequency or any other frequency out there because then it just become a reactive loop for you. Okay? So there are many, just go online and find the frequency that you feel like best serves you in that moment and then run it, and then run it with consistency and understand that the purpose of it is not to attach to the frequency, attach to the, the cheek or attach to anything, or even attach to Josie. It's to simply allow it as a tool. And that tool is supposed to help guide you with information and intention. Okay. Next question, which is the best frequency for the inspiration and how long should do I play it? Uh, how, do I, how long do I play it for? There are several different frequencies. Inspiration, again, begins and ends with you. But there are positivity frequency. I love the luck. I use the luck for inspiration, right? And love is my is one of the greatest inspiration. I know when, when I first told Richard to go in and run the love frequency, I know he was like, this dude has lost every common sense. I, I have a long problem. He's talking about love here, <laughs> right? But love truly does conquer us all. Find those love frequency and let it become the basis, right? Because through all things, love exists. No matter how angry you are, no how, how bitter you are, somewhere in your life, there is love manifesting. Hold on to that and enjoy that, align with that, and then build from there. So what frequency for inspiration? I would say that look for those love frequency, right? But start with the calm, because the calm is a zero out frequency. Learn to zero out yourself. There's also the meditative frequency. Meditation allows you to go in and become the observer, right? <laughs> That's what it's supposed to train you to do. Become internally the observer. You're mimicking the observer. You're mimicking the creative process. Now you're neutralizing yourself. That's why meditation is all about becoming zero, becoming neutral. Right? So find those frequencies. Start with the basic. Those basic frequency. That David has very powerful. Before you jump into a higher frequency of quantum, those are all great because it can target precision, right? If you want to target this, you want to strategically enhance your business or whatever, you can do that. But start with the basic if you're trying to develop and enhance you. 
because everything else becomes a reflection of you, right? It is says this one says over is it is overwhelming as between rife and the frequencies, right? So rife frequency is an external reflection. Well, I will say that, right? Rife reacts to what is happening to you on the outside, right? And that's how it was designed. If you have an illness, is it target that illness and put that information specific to that illness, right? So a lot of times when you go to the right frequency, you're saying. I have uh, bone density issues, so I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work certain frequency, maybe the Earth frequency. I'm gonna run some other frequency, or I'm gonna run frequency for uh, bone healing, right? And and I'm targeting those specific things. But that manifestation could have been caused by multiple other different things, right? It could be an emotional blockage. So this is why I always say start with freeing your chakras. So go to those chakras frequency and begin to resonate and free them loose so that way energy can start flowing. When energy begins to flow, you'll begin to see exactly which area, emotional areas or whatever else that might be distorted. And now you begin to engage that. So I'm um, you know, start with that. And then the quantum frequency is when you go deep. That's that's that transformative frequency. You want to shift. And that's it. I call it a shifting frequency. So when I'm running luck, I'm shifting. When I'm running the quantum frequency of love, I want to go deep within myself to so shift. But a lot of times I have to accept and love and respect the duality of creation. And that's what a lot of times we don't want. People want to tell you to not respect and love what we call sin, right? No, you have to love sin in order to transform from sin, right? The, the longer you reject it, the more you will see it. So stop rejecting those things out there that continue to reflect back to you. Love people even if you believe that they're different or they're sinning. And Richard, I shared, I don't know if I shared this with you in our personal talk. Someone asked me a powerful question one day and in interacting with that person, it brought some of the greatest wisdom. He said, and I'm, I, I challenge all of you to mentally try to see what it would take for you to go in this direction. He says, what would it take for you to go in the street and become a prostitute and sell your body for money? I said, to hell and back, probably never, ever. <laughs> I could not comprehend myself, Richard, going in that direction, right? So my question to everybody out there is that the resistance that keep you from doing something you cannot imagine is the same resistance other people have to change to your directive. Yeah? Somebody that is doing you dirt or harm or coming at you, Richard, they have that same resistance that can't, they can't stop it because nothing around them is inspiring them to let go and love themselves, right? So they keep doing it and it becomes a force of nature. And I need you guys to understand that force of nature goes both ways. What is it that you will never do in life? Understand that force that, that you said is going to take so much more for me to move in that direction. That is the force sometimes for people to change. But if you love them and you embrace them unconditionally and inspire them, and that is where change begins. So we have another question. Mr. Walker. Webster. Oh, Webster. Bradley Webster. Webster. I'm sorry. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> you doing, okay. No bad. No bad. I just jumped on the call, so I'm a little late, but I was just kind of uh, agreeing with what you were saying. You know, that our thoughts really do have an effect, and especially with the kids. And never, I love seeing that little, little, little one on, on your shoulder. And you <laughs> speak about stuff that makes you think like you know what you're talking about. So, for real. Thank so, you. Because little, yeah. Mr. Webster says, like, joy, joy comes in so many different forms, right? Sometimes you're looking for joy through things, you're looking for joy through the person, place, or thing. And sometimes the joy is right here. You just have to yeah. embrace it and it just accept it. Amen. <laughs> and, I, and I'm real. I'm real with mine. You know, I'm not gonna fake anything because I know your life, your personal life, is greater than all this other nonsense. I'm not gonna come out here to pretend to be something I'm not. I'm just like you. I get up in the morning. I have some of the same struggle. I meditate. I have a mindful reflection. I think about my actions. I try to give. I try to do what I need to do. But at the end of the day, she has been that reflection for me. She has been that unconditional love. And I've never seen a human being wake up in the morning, always happy. Oh my God, ne I'm never. 
like the <laughs> wake up in the morning after. She wakes up in the morning because she's pregnant with twins. So I'm lucky if I get a happy morning. I love her though. <laughs> <laughs> right so my wife gets up in the morning and that twins have put a work on her overnight and she's like uh, but she wakes up hot and she is just happy she makes you to learn I'm about happy. more about this awesome life <laughs> yeah I can, I can get that awesome yeah there you go grandbaby and then if you're not feeling that go to the frequency they got they got some love frequency you will feel it you will feel that love and that joy. You'll be sitting in your chair or in, in your bed and you will just feel overwhelmed and sometimes tears will come to your eye. You don't know why. Just embrace it and accept it. Amen. I have the experience of that a lot. So <laughs> awesome. I wonder awesome. why my picture's not coming up, but I appreciate you. And dang, those good, thank good you. vibrations thank you. from the coils really work. For real. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed. Be amazing. And always go within. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then what is it? It's the next question. Said when you say look up the frequency of love, are you referring to the heart chakra? Yes, that's one of multiple frequencies. Richard, do you want to expand upon what frequency of love that you use for the audience? Well, I just went in and basically typed in love, and um, it pulls up a lot of frequencies. So you know, some the planets. I mean, I use the one the Venus. The planet Venus a lot. Um, there is another group of love frequencies, though that that you provided for me, that uh, are not available um, on the uh, website. That has these are very powerful love frequencies, and one of them is about mind mind heart connection, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's a very powerful one for people. And that's on the website. So go there and go to the website and purchase that. Um, yeah. Rich, you know, Richard is a, on a transformative journey. So we are equipping him with all the necessary tools. And I know there's a couple of others. We want to make sure we equip you with all the tools so that way you can be that testimony and say, listen, these frequency work. I've did this, I've did this, I've done this, and this is what I've become. But it begins and ends with me. I always want everybody to do that. All right. So again, reach out to me if you want. If you want to connect to me directly, reach out to me, and then we'll look at a constructive path that serves you to the best of our ability. Because one of my gifts, uh, I, I, Richard can share that with you, and any others that have spoken with me. I have an ability to in tune to people higher self and have them speak directly to their higher selves, right? And sometimes at first it can be uncomfortable, but after a while, you begin to reflect, you begin to hear that voice inside of yourself solidifying. I'm just that conduit. I've allowed myself to be an instrument. And, and, and energy can be sometimes tough, but I allow myself to be that gift for others so others can reflect what is it that I'm experiencing. You know, And I, and I shared this last testimony. It was a mother that called me, right? and she was saying how her son was negatively affecting her, physically abusive, all these different things. And... You know, when her when her higher self began to speak to her, you actually heard herself abusing herself for a long time. She has been abusive to herself for a long time. So the people closest to you will become that abusive reflection. So stop abusing yourself because it begins love yourself and everybody must reflect that. And so we we connected and she was able to uh find a tool that some she could connect to and she began to just be grateful and she was she was amazing from the beginning of the call to the end of the call she was in joy and happiness and hopefully one day she would get an opportunity to, to share that testimony with you guys but i just shared the facts with her i was open to allow her to see what was blocking her and she was able to heal from that and, and I've allowed myself to be that conduit. And I've allowed this tool, this instrument, this chi cord behind me to really allow me to get out the way and allow people to freely flow. And I've trained myself to do that. So blessings to those that have connected with me. Thank you because you have helped me. Richard has helped me a lot understanding myself and healing myself as well. So as I co-create with you, I heal from the, the co-creation and I heal with you. So I love you guys, and, and I know we're going to end. I know we're going to end on this note. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions. I hopefully I did my best to answer the question, but reach out to me. Email. I love you too. Let me just say, this. reach no, out ahead. to Jazzy. Reach out to Jazzy. He's amazing. <laughs> I mean, if you don't take advantage of this, it's on you. I mean, awesome. Yeah, take advantage of it. Thank you, thank you, and Richard. When we come back next week, 
Rich is going to have a greater testament because that man is getting ready to have his, well, not getting ready because he just put it inside himself today. So Richard New Lungs Gear is not working for him right now. I believe that. I accept that. And we're going to hold expectations to his creator for that. Richard, you are amazing. You are a light for the world. And I hope that others will get to see that and inspire themselves. I love each and every one of you. Let's go forth and go within ourselves to heal the world and but begin to heal ourselves, heal our family, heal our community, and heal the world. We have that power. We are here as creative beings. We have that power. I love you guys. You guys are amazing and wonderful. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys next week.